This is the 43 Ocean. It's been prepared for us today so we can have a proper model walkthrough. I want to show you guys uh, all the stuff that, uh, that this boat has. Uh, a lot of it not common in boats from Goldfish. We want to look into all the little details, all uh, the space of the cabin, uh, all the anchor winch, the solar panels, uh, the seating options. So um, yeah, let's take a look. When we wanted to get back in the cruiser market, we made this 43 Ocean. Our focus was uh, the Goldfish DNA, efficiency, sea keeping, go anywhere, anytime, but still with, uh, with all that you expect from the cruiser. Sleeping possibility, nice open area for sunbathing, platform, all you need. So all proper cruiser, they need um, a proper bow anchor. So here you have uh, a windlass, a 12 kilo anchor, a uh, 70 meter chain. The Ocean Series comes with two deck hatches as standard, good for creating some overhead lights into the cabin and of course for, uh, for ventilation when, uh, when um, uh, staying on board. The front deck here as well has a big sun pad, great for, uh, for nice sunny days. Uh, this boat isn't outfitted with one, but it covers all, all of the teak here. On the mirror glass here, the wiper is key to, um, if you have any spray, salt water, it's going to stick if you don't get it off immediately. So uh, the wiper is a highly recommended uh, option from us. Uh, obviously, like you think now, it's nicer without one, but, uh, but uh, we think you're going to regret it. Take the wiper. This boat is, is fully open as standard, and then you have this hardtop as a great option either for wind and rain protection or for sun protection. So it's in GRP with the aluminium frame, always black like this. It covers uh, the, the main part of the, the co cockpit and the lounge is still out in the open. You can have a Bimini extending to the rear and you have this uh, track system here where you can add uh, a fabric cover which goes on top of the hardtop fully enclosing all of the cockpit so for like for us the Norwegian guys where uh, it's more rain than sun uh, that's a pretty cool feature be able to, to use the boat uh, also when the weather is shit on the hardtop you're able to have uh, a radar rig a radar fitted for the navigation system so this one is a Garmin um, but normally it would be uh, Simrad. And then you have uh, driving lights uh, and you have uh, uh, extra external GPS for better positioning of the boat. Also, of course, an uh, uh, antenna for the VHF and AIS system. Uh, it all comes as a package on top of the hardtop. If you don't have a hardtop, you don't have a radar rig. The more modern the boats get the more uh, battery health sensitive they are so the solar solar panel is a great option for maintaining the battery health if you don't have let's say a, a shore power availability on your dock i would really recommend having a solar panel back in the days you know they were not gathering a lot of energy but even though here in in the cloudy norway uh, it really tops off the battery at all times so here at the, at the dock here, we, we don't have any power at all and we just run the boats on the solar panel. Works great. Recommended. On the aft deck for the 43 Ocean, there's two options. There's either the lounge sofas that you see here, uh, two separate sofas with backrests that you can move around as you like. Big storage in both sofas for guests uh, um, I don't store your guest in here, but the stuff that the guest brings into the boat. Um, or if you had one big sun pad that covers the entire engine lid here, uh, with the backwards that you can move forward or backwards. The advantage with the sun bed that is also detachable. So uh, let's say out of the key main season, you can remove the sun bed and just have a, a big open space here to, to run about. To make the ocean a proper sunbathing uh, platform, we have a big GRP platform on the back here, hydraulically lower. So the platform is standard, it always comes with the boat. 
but you can have a hydraulic upgrade. That allows you to lower the platform uh, half a meter underwater. Uh, great for swimming, play with the kids, but also if you want a jet ski cradle or a little uh, dinghy cradle, uh, you can have that position here, pull the boat, uh, the jet ski on and lift it up and bring it with you. I'll show you. Okay, so with the platform uh, down, you still have a step to move back into the boat. Um, the platform, it lifts uh, 250 kilos, but you're not, you're not allowed to bring more than 100, 120 kilos of weight when you are driving. So it lifts much more, it's powerful, but uh, due to the boat being a 50, 60 nights boat, you're not allowed to bring more than about 100 kilos. That means uh, sea do spark, for example, is ideal for this boat. Okay, so uh, the, uh, this is a standard cockpit layout where you have two big sofas, the electric front seat and a pantry. So we'll go through it. Under both sofas here, you have, you have uh, big storage units for uh, cutlery or uh, you know, whatever you want to bring. You have a table, which is nice, it folds out. Of course. Um, and uh, good advice specking this boat is that um, if you want, if you're in a cold climate like us, there's outlets for from the defroster and the webasto underneath there. Allows you for a little bit of extra heat uh, for long nights. We didn't design this boat for cooking big meals, but there's a simple, easy uh, place to prepare a little bit meal for your family. So it's a serving platter to move around like this one. Uh, to uh, maybe some ham and cheese for, for uh, your guests. There's fresh water, I think, and there's an induction cooktop. And then there's a big cooler underneath. All this is standard in all of the boats. If you want an additional fridge, there's one underneath here. Also, there's a trash can here. In front, there's in, in the driving space here. There's a uh, there's a pouch which doubles as a backrest for the driver, so you can be tall but sitting up, or you can electrically move it backwards, so the driver can sit down, be more protected from the wind and the rain, and it doubles as a backrest. For, uh, for the passengers. Pretty neat future, feature. Like that. And then you have more of a relaxed helm here. You, always have, you also have a stand-up position here for the passenger, and for a passenger, and a big storage underneath it here for all the stuff that you bring, like a sun cream, sunglasses, whatever. There's also a piece of storage underneath here. So all of the sofa areas yeah, have these big spaces underneath. On oh, this boat, there's a, a Volvo installation and a Garmin navigation. And the Volvo is a twin 440, uh, the D6, uh, with the joystick system. There's a side power uh, thruster in the front and the two 16-inch Garmin screens. You also have an autopilot if you like. But this is more or less the basic how we, we build it up. We have um, a big uh, JL stereo, Bluetooth control from your phone, and um, the control panel for all the switches, fuses, main power, and two uh, wireless chargers. So for a lot of people, a thruster system is important. Uh, normally, we don't recommend having a boat thruster on our boats. For a boat like this with two uh, diesels, either you have the Yanmar or the Volvo or anything else, I would definitely settle just for a joystick. Uh, it handles really well 
and has a lot of power to, to keep you sideways in the uh, in this uh, if you have a lot of wind. That said, on this boat, not being the, the performance focused like we have in the other boats, um, we're happy to build a boat with a boat thruster for you. We also have a new system, a jet thruster system, which uh, pushes water out instead to, to move the bow sideways. So in the ca cabin for the 43, there's a big uh, twin bed, uh, a piece of wooden furniture, which doubles as a sofa and a piece of storage. You have a coffee maker uh, and you have a, a smaller uh, twin bed underneath the cockpit and a proper bathroom. Also, I want to mention that underneath all of this, that big bed here, there's a, there's a storage. Okay, so the main bed in this boat is two by two meters, two hatches, giving, giving lights. There's an outlet for diesel heater, and there's a storage stations for phones. Uh, and it's really a comfortable space to be. Uh, this cabin can easily house four people for a weekend. In the rear of the cabin, underneath the cockpit, there's uh, two electrical outlets for 230 volt. There's a light switch. This is a holder for an espresso machine. Uh, and there's the, the small bed. This bed is, you know, it's made for kids, but, you know, I, I'll fit in here as well. I'm Two, no, 190 centimeters, 100 kilos, fits well. The bed is two meter long and 120 centimeters wide. If it fits me, it should fit your kids. So uh, the bathroom here comes as standard. Uh, no options here, all you see is standard in the boat. There's an electrical toilet uh, with a holding tank and it runs on fresh water to, to avoid any odor in the, uh, in the cabin. There's an outlet for the diesel heater to uh, dry out the bathroom. You have a sink and a shower. Both of them runs uh, cold and hot water. Also in the corner here you have shelves for towels. You have some storage for toothbrushes and all the other basic stuff you need. For us uh, Scandinavians, heating is key for uh, uh, a nice experience boating. So in this boat I would for at least the Nordic climates, I would really recommend having both a defroster and a diesel heater. The defroster uses uh, the hot water from the cooling on the engines to heat the cabin and the cockpit. The diesel heater can uh, burn diesel to create heat in the same areas when you're not running the engines. So having both of them is a great combination. Then you have outlets in the bathroom, in the cabin, and all around the cockpit here for the driver, for the passenger, and for the sofas here. So it really creates uh, the little extra uh, of dry, warm air that you need when the weather is shit. Another good option that I would like to have on this boat is the lighting package. So it's separated into three different uh, products. It's cabin lighting, the cockpit lighting, and a deck lighting. So let's start with the uh, first, the cabin. There's a light strip underneath all, and then there's strategic position lighting, and you can control it from the cabin with a switch in there. Uh, and then you have the cockpit lighting, which is uh, LED strips underneath there and underneath the backrest uh, and at the helm. It's all uh, controlled by this LumiShore system. You can control the RGB, all lighting on all of the boat dim it up and down and it gives a really nice and ambient uh, lighting in the boat either for driving at night and you have the red driving lights or uh, just to light it up to move around the boat for the last thing you have uh, a deck lighting all around the windscreen there's a lead strip creating this just ambient beautiful light outside of the boat the last thing is ju it's just for show but uh, it creates this mystical, uh, nice uh, evening lighting. The 43 is a cruiser. So we picked out three engine options that we like. So we have uh, a base engine, which is the Mercury 350 horsepower petrol engine. Uh, 
it's a really nice, light, fun package, package to drive. More than enough power. Uh, it's a cheap engine, uh, easy to maintain, uh, and gives the boat a good starting price. Our favorite drivetrain uh, for this boat is the Yanmar 370. It's um, a duoprop hydraulic drive. It's more than enough power to, um, to run this boat uh, more than 50 knots. Doesn't matter how many people you bring, it's, it's still just, it's just carry-ons. And for the performance option, we have a Mercury 550 diesel uh, with the M6 drive, cleaver propeller. If you choose that drivetrain, you uh, you have to say no to a couple of other comfort stuff that that uh, we talked about today. For example, the the hydraulic platform, you just have to have a permanent one. Uh, and there's a couple of other stuff that we want to talk to you about if you choose the 65 knots diesel engine. So when you're uh, building the spec for your boat, you start with the paint color for the boat. When we talk about hull and deck color, it's uh, every, all the GRP that you see. So it's the outside of the hull, inside of the deck, everything. There's one color, base color. And then you choose your flooring. That's the next biggest thing, right? Our favorite for this boat is a natural teak. You can have flexi teak or you can have a soft scrape. It's all about what kind of look you want to your boat. But keep in mind that if you're bringing your boat to a warm climate, the flexi teak and the black soft grip is not the best choice for you. Then the natural teak and the gray soft grip is the way to go. Then for the kind of the uh, which short you, shirt you want that day, it's the upholstery. Uh, it's easily removable. So if you were to kind of do something uh, a little out of the ordinary, I would choose to do that on the upholstery, because then if you get tired of it, you can remove it, change it, do something else with it. It's always available in our web shop. And there's one piece of upholstery for all of the boat. One choice. In the engine bay, there's plenty of space. So it's easily uh, space for uh, standard paddle boards or any other stuff you want to carry with you. I want to talk, to you, uh, talk a little bit about the electrical system and the fuel system. There's a uh, aluminium fuel tank, it carries a little more than 800 liters. You have an electrical system uh, where you can have lithium batteries, if you like, uh, to have more capacity uh, to run uh, both uh, diesel heaters, uh, the kitchen, all that stuff. Uh, also, the lithium batteries are much lighter uh, and easier to maintain.